<laughs> Brett Friedlander, Saturdays Down South, ACC reporter. He joins us on the Adam Gold Show at B Freed ACC. Uh, are you ready? Tom- tomorrow we we jump in with both feet. Yeah, we do, but, I mean, we've already gotten a taste of it last week, and, boy, that was a pretty good appetizer, wasn't it? It was a great football game. It was a, it was an old-school, low-possession, run-the-ball. Uh, I mean, it really was a great college football game. I enjoyed watching it. Uh, I, I wasn't sure I was ready, but Georgia Tech got me ready by really going toe-to-toe. Didn't they? Okay, let's just start there. Didn't they look like the better team? They were the better team, and I I said it a month ago because they may not be the better team or they're not going to be the better team at the end of the season, but in this particular scenario, on this particular day, it was obvious that they were going to be the better team because they had everybody back of consequence from a team that finished strong, won seven games last year, had a dynamic quarterback, and oh, by the way, Tyler Santucci is their defensive coordinator. And Florida State was replacing basically everybody of consequence. Does that sound familiar? Because if it doesn't, it's the exact same scenario as Duke Clemson in the opener last year. You, you should have been able to see this one coming a mile away. And you know what, Brent Key, Georgia Tech stumbled onto the right coach. You know, they, <laughs> if, if, if Jeff Collins would have made it to the end of the year, they would have had a coaching search. They would have brought in a recycled guy right. from somewhere else with a name. But they got stuck with Brent Key. The kids responded to him, and they, they played better. He got the job, and now, look, he's, he's really, I think, got something going there at Georgia Tech. I don't think they're a championship team this year, but I wouldn't want to play them. No. Um, they, they, they were much better I, than I thought on the defensive side of the ball. I thought they would be good offensively, but I, I, I wasn't sure that they would be this good defensively. Florida State could not run the ball on them. And maybe it's because they didn't really respect D.J. Uyunglele, a quarterback. Uh, Which is understandable. 100% understandable. Uh, But in many cases in a college football game, the team that controls the line of scrimmage will win the game. And that team was Georgia Tech pretty much for 60 minutes. Um, On both sides of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, They... they ran the ball at will. They had 200 yards rushing in in a game mm-hmm. with just seven possessions. Just absolutely. And Adam, Florida State got 60 of its 115 yards on the ground on the opening drive. That's right. That's right. They didn't do anything on the ground uh, the rest of the way. All right. Let 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 me. You can take as long as you want with this. We have. Uh, I want to talk about State, and I want to talk about uh, Carolina as well, and if we have time for Miami or somebody else like that, maybe. Um, is Florida State still a, uh, a playoff contender for you? Yes. Uh, Why? Especially now with the 12-team uh, uh, playoff. All you got to do is win the ACC. They run the table the rest of the way, and they're in. Um, yeah, but do you think the team we want? See, this is where, I, this is where we part. I think the team we watched in Florida State was an indication that they're not going to go 7-0 and the rest of the way in we'll league see. play. We'll see. There's a lot of moving pieces that they've got to learn to play together. Uh, they brought in a lot of talented transfers. We'll, we'll see. And, and you know what? The schedule doesn't work in their favor. No. Because now they come home jet-lagged with no rest and no time to, to fix a lot of the, the problems on the defensive and offensive line. And they're playing a Boston College team that darn near beat them last year. And if they wouldn't have committed 18 penalties, they would have. They would have right. lost 31-29. And Thomas Castellanos dro- drove them crazy. So if Florida State loses this game, they're done. Yeah, but, but they're not out of the picture. So will they? I, I, I'm skeptical that they will. But they're still in the picture. I, 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 think, you, I think you have to be... You have to have one loss to be in the ACC championship game. Uh, I am. Well, they've got one. They've used their yeah, mulligan. <laughs> I, I I don't believe they're going to escape uh, with a game home to get home home to Clemson at Miami. Um, they have to go to yeah. SMU. Uh, they still have to play Carolina. Not that that should be that hard for them, but you never know. I mean, maybe North nope. Carolina will uh, will surprise us. So let's go there. And DJU is is good for one of those games yep. where he throws it to the wrong team too many times. I mean, that's why he got run out of Clemson. No, no question about it. Tar Heels are playing one of the ACC's most important games 
outside the league this year uh, because it really is the middle of the ACC against the middle of the Big Ten. Um, how, how do you see UNC at Minnesota? I have no idea. <laughs> and, 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 and the reason I have no idea is because we have no idea, A, who's going to be playing quarterback, and B, how they're going to play quarterback. And then you have the uh, X factor of Jeff Collins in the new defense and how that's going to you know, translate onto the field for the first game. So this is a totally new, uncharted water situation. I am told by folks from the SEC at, at Saturday uh, Down South that Max Johnson is a much better gamer than he is a practice player, and UNC better hope that because from everything I hear, he has not been impressive in practice, which is why Mac hasn't named a starter right now. So um, I, I think it's incumbent on whoever plays quarterback at UNC to basically hand the ball off to Marion Hampton as many times as possible, and then when you have to throw it, make sure you throw it to a guy in the same colored jersey. Uh, just don't lose the game. Um, and then it's going to be up to the defense to be better than it has been. Well, how hard is it for North Carolina's defense to be better than it has been? Other than the South Carolina <laughs> game last year, <laughs> not very. Right. That's that's. It's just one of those weird things. I don't believe that Mac Brown has forgotten how to coach or forgotten how to recruit. But when was the last time North Carolina had a good defense? When Larry Fedora was there. Did they have a good defense under Larry Fedor? Well, they 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 went eleven and one, so I would. Yeah, I'm not sure that was about defense. Good one. Well, but yeah. it had to be good enough to win games. Yeah, there was still uh, there was still the, the the leftovers of the um, the Butch Davis era when they had yeah. when they had Larry Fedora as uh, as the head coach in the early part of his tenure. Brett Friedlander is joining us Saturdays down south. ACC reporter. Um, somebody asked me. After the Florida State loss to Georgia Tech, if this opened the door for the Wolfpack, and my response was, that door was already open for the Wolfpack, regardless of what Florida State did or did not do. Um, now, we're not going to find out much about them tomorrow night against Western Carolina, but it w- it's a good, glorified scrimmage to get them ready for 10 days later against Tennessee. What are your thoughts on getting ready for the volunteers. Yeah, I would imagine you're not going to see a lot of the playbook. No. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to see the obligatory, oh, same old NC State offense and uh, afterwards. But keep in mind that they're, they're, they're not, you know, showing their cards to Tennessee. The other thing, too, is I think it's really important to get off to a great start, not because of aesthetics or whatever. I think it's just important to get enough of a lead at halftime get everybody out of there and just let the walk-ons play the rest of the way so that everybody's healthy for Tennessee. Um, I'm really interested. You know, everybody wants to see all the the offensive additions, and I think that it's going to be fun to watch because there's a lot of weaponry there that they didn't have last Mm. year. But I want to see the defense because the narrative is that the defense is going to take a major step back because Peyton Wilson is gone. And I, I think Tony Gibson has proven over the years that he's a really, really good coordinator who could put together a great scheme. And he still has a lot of talent to work with because you look at the ascension of, of linebackers, you know, Isaiah Moore and, and, and Drake uh, Thomas and then Peyton. I mean, there's talent there. Caden Fordham is going to be a really good uh, you know, linebacker. Sean Brown could be a star. So I'm looking to see how the defense plays and to you know, see what kind of chip on their shoulder they have to show that, hey, we can still do this. Look, I... I trust Tony Gibson's defense. Though they don't have a uh, a stud in Peyton Wilson, um, and they don't necessarily have the pro prospects that they have had in the front seven in the past. But man, uh, they consistently put good defensive teams on the field. I think they'll be good. But you, to me, it really comes down to, and you talked about it initially. Uh, they are so more dynamic and varied offensively. Uh, they look like they have the personnel. If the offensive line is good, it's always uh, a yeah. caveat. Uh, they look like they have the personnel to ram it down your throat with Jordan Waters, uh, and they've got change of pace because they can hand it to Casey Concepcion as well. But, man, the uh, the weapons they have brought in on the outside. Uh, and Grayson McCall is going to feature in both the run and the pass game, obviously. 
Uh, they could and I'll be. Tell you something else too. A, a guy that a guy that's kind of getting overlooked. Is, I think is Hollywood Smothers. Yeah, I saw him play two straight years at Carter Finley in the state championship game in high school, um, and that kid is just quick. And I think he's going to be a really good piece in the passing game out of the backfield. I mean, with a name like Hollywood Smothers, you have to be good, don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. I mean, I think it's a rule. You can't you can't have that name and not be fun to watch. Uh, no, because if, if you're not very good, you'd be uh, Compton or, or West Covina Smothers, right? Right. It, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Huntington Beach. Uh, I have no idea if that's good or not. All right. Uh, last last thing, and I need to be quick. I, I apologize to make it no short. Um, Miami is the hotness. I know that we haven't seen Mario Cristobal coach him up whether it's in Coral Gables or in Eugene. I realize that. But sometimes the players can overcome the coaching. Can that happen here? Yes, it can, because Cam Ward is really the real deal, and he's surrounded by the best receiving core in the ACC. Um, now, the question is, does, does Mario mess it up, or does he just roll the ball out there and let him do their thing? So I, I think that's history and Mario are the two things that uh, – that, that Miami will have to overcome the most of this season. Well, and he you know, should just roll the Florida balls game, out there and let them do their thing. That Florida game is, it, to me, the, the most important game for the ACC. Yep. Because Florida is a, a middle to bottom of the uh, SEC team whose coach is already on the hot seat. And if you go down there and lose this game with all the hype that they've gotten, uh, Feinbaum and those guys are going to have a picnic with that. No question about it. Brett Friedlander, Saturdays Down South at B. Freed, ACC. My friend, I appreciate your time. Anytime for you, Adam. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, Again, that always makes me laugh.